Seedlings Flat, Poronui Beach. A day trip is delight on a sunny day, famous for the brightly coloured stones washed up on its shore. But in inclement weather, the spit is a wild and desolate place, just the sort of isolation the people who come here to live and build weekend batches are seeking. They come here for the West Coast type of atmosphere, the fishing, the gemstones, the sense of community. Recently though, that warm community feeling has taken quite a battering. Earlier this week, five of the locals were up in front of a magistrate in Christchurch because of a gate they'd erected. Yesterday, they were ordered to take it down. The dispute over the gate came about because of this access way extending down the side of this house to the beach. The house is owned and lived in by Lynn and Ken Saitars. When they bought the property in 1973, there was a foot track down one side. By combining it with the neighbour's foot track, they created a vehicle access. But the Saitarses became fed up with the noise and speed of vehicles using the track and claimed stock would occasionally wander up from the beach. So they erected a gate, which was subsequently demolished by their neighbour, Vince Burke. Vince built his batch up behind the Saitarses in 1970 and took particular exception to having his access to the beach on his motorbike curtailed. I wouldn't have built the place here at this particular end of the uh, settlement unless I had direct access to the beach. It's alright for Mr Sitars, he has immediate access through his back fence onto the beach and which I now have to make a long detour to get that sort of access. Since the first gate went up, things have gone from bad to worse, as Vince's photos show. Restrictions on the access way have gone through regular transformations. From posts, to posts set in concrete, to fences leaving an alleyway so narrow there was no way Vince could get to the beach on his four-wheel motorbike. The Saitarses claim things wouldn't have got out of hand if Vince had agreed to just open and close the original gate, or simply use another access way 250 metres away. Both sides accuse each other of land grabbing. Things finally came to a head in December last year, when Vince and some neighbours erected this gate, stopping the Saitarses from driving up to their house. When their wheelchair-bound son visited, he couldn't be driven up to their door. But there's a reason why these former friends have fallen out so badly. The 10 acres of land in the settlement is jointly owned by 57 tenants under a single title, with no owner having claim to any specific area of the property. Incredibly, Vince had worked closely with Ken Saitars on a private member's bill to sort out the mess. With the help of Ruth Richardson, it was passed and is known as the Birdlings Flat Lands Title Act. Eventually, a commissioner will be appointed to have the settlement formally surveyed and the tenants will get freehold title at last. That's the one thing these neighbours are in agreement over. They want the commissioner to sort out matters once and for all. Turn right on your way to Banks Peninsula, head for the Pacific Ocean and you'll hit the rugged seaside settlement of Birdlings Flat. It's a wild, windswept sort of a place. And so are the locals. Yes, well, Birdling's Flat isn't everybody's cup of tea. It's uh, unique. Um, I think it's the last place that you've got freedom, really, to do what, what you like. Great fishing. The beach is unique for its gemstones. Some of the local disputes get fairly wild, too. An argument over this access way has resulted in assault and willful damage complaints, an eight-year court battle, tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees, and even an act of parliament. It all started back in 1957, when a group of 57 batch owners bought this 5.6 hectare strip of beachfront land from a local farmer. To avoid the extra cost of subdivision, they agreed to buy the land as a single block, each having an equal 57th share. Any decisions about individual sections and boundaries within the settlement would be made communally. Big mistake. Since 1957, there has always been disputes about boundaries, access ways, roading. By far the most virulent dispute has been over this beach access, which runs alongside a house belonging to local resident Ken Saitas. Vince and Colleen Burke, who live in the house opposite, have used this access way on and off for the past 23 years. 
as have other locals, as this home video shows. We use it for uh, taking our vehicle through from just walking through to go fishing for four wheel motorbikes to beach buggies and we tow the boat through. We launch a boat off this beach and it, it's the most convenient access way. But for the past eight years, Ken Saitars has been trying to cut back on its use and even claim it back as part of his section. Vince and other locals have been fighting him tooth and nail. Ken and his wife Lynn declined to appear on our programme but talked to us off camera. Ken claims an access way proposed in 1974 would have run right through his elderly neighbour's garage. So, out of goodwill, he gave up a strip of his own section for a narrow walkway. He says Vince Burke asked him to widen it so he could get his beach buggy through. Ken, then a weekender at Birdlings, agreed and later used the access way himself for a buggy of his own. He wouldn't have created it if he wasn't happy about it. <laughs> Um, he created it with his neighbour, so uh, that, that was the uh, agreement of the day, yes. Ken says it was only ever a temporary arrangement, as a favour for a friend, an arrangement which could be revoked at any time. But that arrangement stood for the next 15 years. When Ken built his house, he left room for the access way, and it became one of half a dozen well-worn routes to the beach. In the minds of Vince and other locals like Tony Quinn, it was there to stay. One of the reasons for uh, buying the section where we did was easy access to the access way to get onto the beach. If there had been any question at the time that the access way was not permanent, then we wouldn't have bought there. But by the end of the 1980s, the old communal ideal for the settlement was falling apart. There were boundary reshuffles and accusations of land grabbing with some residents securing bigger sections than others, and the others were getting disgruntled. With bickering turning to downright hostility, residents called in political heavyweight Ruth Richardson, then their local MP and later Minister of Finance, now an economic consultant. My observation of human nature is that when it comes to land, people will behave in a fashion that they would never contemplate. Uh, in their normal daily life. Ruth Richardson worked with the locals and came up with a solution. Separate freehold titles, one for each section. The simple proposition was that each of the 57 should be able to secure individual title. That's what the rest of us enjoy. That, in fact, is the mark of a democracy. But just like in a democracy, not all the shareholders agreed. So Ruth Richardson took a private bill to the highest forum in the land. It was only Parliament uh, that in fact uh, could put Birdlings Flat on the same footing uh, as any other neighbourhood. In other words, you could own your own land and you knew where your boundaries were. At the select committee hearings in May 1991, Vince, Ken and other Birdlings locals learnt that the layout of the settlement would be based on existing boundaries on the day the bill became law. So if you didn't have the section you wanted before the Act was passed, it would be too late afterwards. A few days after those hearings, Ken Saitars made his move. One week after we got home from that meeting in Wellington, uh, Mr Sitar's put a one-strand wire across with um, sheeting tied to it. Ken, who was now a full-time resident at Birdlings, claimed the wire was to keep out wandering stock and noisy vehicles. He argued that buggy owners could just as easily use another access way further along the road. But Vince and Tony believed neither stock nor noise was a major problem and that Ken was using them as a smokescreen. The feeling was that this is what he was trying to establish, was new boundaries before the bill went through. Ken says he wasn't land grabbing, merely reasserting his interest in land that had previously been his. But after 15 years of regular use, Vince and his friends weren't going to let a few strands of wire stand in their way. We took that away and we kept rolling it up and throwing it over his fence. And then he put a gate, a gate up one end of the access way and he kept closing it on us. But Ken's new gate kept mysteriously disappearing. <laughs> the, the first thing I know, I've got a policeman on my door accusing me of pink, uh, the gates being punched. But you must remember that I wasn't the only person in here that was quite irate. Vince Berg did have at least one run-in with the gate, in his beach buggy, 
On that occasion, he came off second best. Mr Burke was charged at that time with intentionally damaging Mr Sighthouse's gate. Vince went to court, but the charge was dropped in exchange for a payment towards the repair of the gate. It was a silly thing to do and I think we learnt a lesson out of it. <laughs> but there were still more lessons to be learnt, as tempers in the community were about to flare even further. We just had a confrontation with Sitars over this, he's already ripped this out once, pushed Colleen out of the way, he's very concerned about this indeed. At the communally owned seaside settlement of Birdlings Flat, an argument over this access way was turning into a full-scale battle. In August 1992, concerned about the noise and safety of vehicles beside his house, Ken Saitars restricted the access way to pedestrians only, much to the disgust of his neighbour Vince Burke and other local beach buggy owners. But not only did Ken narrow the access way, he fenced it off, claiming most of the land back into his own section. Vince and the others were furious. I used to be able to drive straight out there and go straight out onto the beach. If that's not a professional land grab, I don't know what is. Ken even put in a new garden, right where the access way used to be. So Vince and his friends gave him a taste of his own medicine. They built their own fence, blocking the road to Ken's house. We put a fence across this portion here to deny him access to his house with his vehicle. And, and um, so it started, things started really hotting up then. Today is the 30th of uh, December 1992, and we just had a confrontation with Sitars over this. He's already ripped this out once, pushed Colleen out of the way, and uh, he's very concerned about this indeed. Well, when he takes that fence down so I can go through to the beach, like we did for 22 bloody years, then we'll take our fence down. It's as simple as that. Oh, he tried to push it over and take it away, and he got quite irate. Colleen stepped between us because she was frightened he's going to throw a punch at me or I might have a go at him and it could get more serious. So I got in between the two of them and it was a little bit like playing netball. One went one way, I went the other way. It was just to stop either of them. Despite Colleen's efforts, Ken complained that Vince had pushed him several times. The next thing I know the Lincoln police are out and I'm being cautioned uh, for assault. The police let Vince off with a warning and the fence across the road stayed put. So for the next three months, Ken had to park his car around the corner until he could get the case to court. A district court judge ruled that the fence across the road was a nuisance and ordered Vince and the others to remove it. At the same time, in March 93, Ruth Richardson's private bill for the subdivision of the settlement was passed in Parliament. And Ken Saitars made another move. He blocked off the access way completely and claimed it all back as part of his section. For Vince Burke, it was a case of now you see it, now you don't. We couldn't walk down it, no, no, the access way was completely gone. Ken claimed to have good reason for needing the land back. He wanted to build a wheelchair ramp for his son, who had recently been paralysed in a road accident. But Vince Burke and Tony Quinn argued Ken could build the ramp on the other side of the house and believed he was making yet another attempt at a land grab. It was obvious to us there was an attempt being made to annex the land. Uh, we decided then that, uh, irrespective of cost, we were going to fight it. So they all went back to court. This time, a judge ruled that the access way belonged to all the residents and ordered Ken to reinstate it to its original width. Ken appealed the decision at the High Court, but lost. So he reluctantly restored the access way, to Vince and the others' delight. Oh, we felt great. Yes, yes, we got it back. <laughs> um, and we thought that would be the end of it. Not quite. Ken took his case to Dr Ed Wiley, the commissioner overseeing the subdivision. But when Dr Wiley decided the access way should remain at its full width, Ken made a last-ditch attempt to challenge the decision. So in February 99, back they all went to court yet again. The judge found Ken had no lawful right to the access way and upheld the commissioner's decision. For Vince Burke, Tony Quinn and friends, victory at last. It meant the land could finally be subdivided six years after the act was passed. 
Oh, excellent. It was really great. It meant the commissioner can get on and we can we can get on with our lives in here because it has been a huge hold up. With residents expecting their individual titles in November, an eight year battle is finally over. We have won, but there really was nothing to win as such. There should never have been anything to win. It should never have happened. Ken Saitar says he now wants to put the whole thing behind him and make progress for the future in the scenic corner of New Zealand. But still the animosity lingers. I'll never speak to that man again as long as I live. I don't want to know anything about him. Which calls for some words of wisdom. Uh, my advice is to celebrate the finality uh, and, and get on with um, just, you know, enjoying Birdling Flat for what it is. It is a fantastic experience. You know, go with the magic. Um, be in love with your future, not, not uh, agitate about your past. Yeah.